Radiological technology fields account for two of the many healthcare career programs offered by Montgomery College at the state-of-the-art Health Sciences Center in Silver Spring. And now with a new program from College of Notre Dame of Maryland, students have the opportunity to earn a Bachelor of Science degree right here at Montgomery College. Stay tuned, Campus Conversations is next. Welcome to Campus Conversations. I'm Fritzi Bodenheimer. Steve Simon is on vacation. What are radiological sciences and what career options do they offer? Here with me today to help answer those questions are Lee Giles Brown, a professor in the Diagnostic Medical Sonography Program at Montgomery College. Rose A. Lee, the Radiological Technology Program Coordinator, and Emily George, a student in the Radiological Technology Program. Welcome to all of you. Thanks for coming today. Thanks Thank for you. having us. Rose, I want to start with you. Mm -hmm. Tell me what does a radiological, technological person do, and what is really the right term that we should be using? The correct term for the person who takes x-rays, and the um, layman's term is x-ray tech, but we're called now radiographers. And basically what we do is we are the specialists who are trained to take diagnostic images for the radiologist who is the physician to read the images. And Lee, what about someone who gets into sonography? What is the right title and what do they do? Uh, you usually call us sonographers or ultrasonographers. And uh, sonography is a modality whereby we are taking imaging pictures using sound waves. So the sound waves enter the patient's body, bounce off of their tissues, and return back up and produce an image on the screen that the radiologist can then interpret. That's an amazing uh, technology. We know mostly about it because we hear about women having sonograms when they have babies, but there are many other uses. There are many other uses. I, in fact, uh, work part-time at a children's hospital, and so uh, we uh, can apply it to the general abdomen um, as well as some small parts in our body like our thyroid. Mm. Uh, we even do uh, brain ultrasounds, uh, which is called neurosynology. Wow. And, um, there are, and there's vascular applications. Uh, there are um, echo or heart-related applications. So there's a wide variety within ultrasound that you can uh, use it for. That's fascinating. I don't think most of us recognize that because we're just so used to hearing about one or two of those. Yeah. And how about in radiology? It's not just taking x-rays. It's a You know, it's not bigger. just of the bones. That's mm -hmm. what most people think. It's of the bones. And really, any part of the body can be x-rayed using diagnostic imaging, you can look at, again, similar to sonography, we can visualize the vessels of the brain. We Ac actually, the vessels? Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's small. Abso absolutely, wow. absolutely. Of course, the, um, the organs of the uh, digest digestive tract, like the stomach and the uh, small intestine, and then we can also look at gallbladders. Um, wow. In addition, you can look at joints by injecting uh, contrast media into the specific area. So there's really no part of the body that, between the two of us, <laughs> we cannot image. Wow, it's fascinating. Now, when someone decides that they want to get into this field and come into the program at Montgomery College, uh, what types of skills do they need to have? Do they need to be good at math and science? Do they need to be... Uh, good at physics, what what's makes a good candidate for the program? Well, I think a good candidate, yes, you do need to have some strengths in math and sciences because it is a math and science uh, dominated field. But I think most importantly is there has to be a desire to be a good patient care advocate and to be an, uh, a good critical thinker, which means we need people who are not real concrete in their thinking, that they can deviate from a path because Patients may come in a certain way and the book will say one way to take the image and the patient simply can't do that and you still need to take the image. So we need someone that can think outside the box and that's really the type of person that makes the best radiographer. That's fascinating to me mm -hmm. because I think when we think about medical fields, we think it's very concrete, you know, the science and the math and there's a certain procedure. Mm -hmm. uh, that's really interesting. Yeah. So Emily, let me bring you into the conversation. You are a student uh, in the program. What made you decide to pursue this type of major? I was always interested in the healthcare field. Um, medical imaging was fascinating to me, uh, just how we could see into the body with x-rays and sonograms. 
and um, I just wanted to be a part of working in a hospital, working with patients, and then just working in that a very important diagnostic field. And uh, you come a long way to come to Montgomery College. Uh, you drive, I don't know, more than an hour? More than an hour, one way. Yes. One way. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a long way to come for classes. I'm not sure everyone would have that dedication. What made you decide to come? Well, the program has had a 100% pass rate for the last six years, and I knew that spoke a lot about the program, um, just how well the students can do in the program. Also, the facilities that we go to for our clinical sites um, are the top in the area, so that would be a very good experience, learning experience, especially as a student. What can students expect when they come in? What's the balance of in classroom, sort of traditional lecture, and then going out to the clinical sites for both programs? Well, for the radiology program, it's probably very similar for sonography. There obviously are classroom uh, commitments, um, and they're what most students probably expect going to college is lecture lab um, combination, certainly not every day. But it is time consuming, and there's some, in, there's obviously involvement in the studies, making sure you're staying up with everything. It's very fast paced. I think what is challenging for a lot of people is the amount of clinical time. Um, Emily, when she graduates, um, she's probably not aware of this yet. Well, <laughs> she hasn't thought about it, but she <laughs> will have finished 1,760 hours in the clinical. Wow. So that's a large amount of, t of her life <laughs> that <laughs> yeah. she spent training and doing very well, too, I might add. She's a very strong student. It's going to be an awesome radiographer. Those hours, uh, do they get you a degree? Do they get you certified in something? How does that work? It makes you eligible to take the National Registry uh, given by the American Registry of Radi Radiologic Technologists, the ARRT. And you cannot work in any part of the country without being registered through the ARRT. So it makes you eligible for, eligible for that. Um, it's like the final, final that she'll have to take. Wow, so, so you're not quite finished until you take that, that right. last uh -huh. big exam. Right.